Hey, John at Witch Doctors. I want to talk to you today about something I see a lot of controversy on a subject I see all the time on Facebook. Should I solder wires or should I use crimps or should I use posi locks? And if you don't know what posi locks are, they're not a new, um, something brand new, but they're a connector and I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute, but it's just a different type of connector. So if you get into that discussion with anybody, should you wire, solder your wires or should you put the connectors? It's going to be a fight. It's like politics, okay? People that are total solder fans are going to say you're a hack if you use a butt connector or a crimp, crimp style connector is what they call it. So people are going to tell you you're a hack. Um, other people are going to say no way, it's the best way. So I want to give you some some facts actually, and I'll have a link on the web on the uh, video here for the website on a little article that you can read up a lot more than what I'm telling you. Um, but if you think about it a little bit, people always want to want to uh, connect some wires up on their bike, whether it be their stereo or extend handlebar wiring, um, special lights, whatever. Okay and you'll get that, what should I do? Solder or crimp, okay? First thing I'm gonna tell you is, if you look under your car, if you look on your lawnmower, if you look on your motorcycle, do you see any solder connection, connections where the wires go together? The answer is no. And, and you say, well, why? That is not a good way to do it, okay? And now people are flipping, falling off the couch right now, okay? Soldering a wire is not the right way to do it, okay? There's a lot of downsides to that. Now, if you don't know how to solder, that's obviously a big downside. You're gonna have people say, well, go to Harbor Freight, buy a solder gun, buy this, buy that. Okay, that's fine. That's just like buying a saw or a tape measure and you don't know how what the little lines on a tape measure mean. So how are you gonna measure anything? If you don't know how to use a solder gun, if you don't know how to use solder at all, you're gonna have the worst mess of your life, okay? You're gonna screw it up royal, okay? So that's number one. Yeah, you could do it and you can teach yourself, but if you use a connector, a crimp connector, it's the right way to do it and it's easy, okay? So some of the downside with the solder is that being one, if you don't know how to do it, okay, everybody says it's easy. It's not easy, okay? When you first try it, the wires aren't gonna to stick together. You're gonna to have gobs of uh, solder hanging like drips it's gonna be a mess okay one of the things is solder joints are extremely rigid okay if you have a solder joint two wires put together you can't break them apart it's that strong so therefore you're gonna say well that's what I want I want a super strong connection the problem is like on a motorcycle you have a lot of vibration okay a motorcycle doesn't weigh a lot it vibrates a ton when you have that connection, it's constantly vibrating. When it's rigid, it's going to snap, and it will snap over time. It will start to break those wires apart, okay? Where when you have a um, crimp connector, the wire moves around. It's only, it's only crimped on that end. The wire is flexible to move around, so you don't have any problems, okay? I have probably 30 plus years of doing this stuff. Everything from lawnmowers clear up to 200 mile an hour drag cars. I was a mechanic 25 plus years. I had a car repair shop, okay? You don't solder anything, okay? So the other thing with the solder is it's, it's susceptible to corrosion, okay? The solder itself can corrode. You'll see that um, in uh, environments like uh, Florida where you have the salt air. That stuff corrodes a lot worse. What's the last thing you want in an electrical connection? Corrosion, okay? So it's not a good idea. So when you have the flexible or the rigid and it's not flexible, you have corrosion, you have, you have to kind of know what you're doing. Those are all things um, where the world, the motorcycle lives in. You live in damp, you live in rain, you live it, um, lives in high humidity, salt air, vibration, all that stuff, okay? So it's not a very good idea to do that. Um, one of the other things is people will say, well, if you do the solder joint, it's, the, it's more conductive, it, it's better. Not necessarily true. If you, have, if you do it right, okay, it's virtually the same conductivity as if you put a crimp terminal, okay? 
to say if you do it right, there's a lot of steps. And, and like I said, the, the reasons you don't want to do it far outweigh the reasons you would do it. Okay. So with that being said, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but I wanted to show you a couple of the other things that I'm talking about here. As far as a crimp terminal, there's some things that will help you. Um, I'll show you a little bit about the posi locks because I know a lot of people don't know anything about that. I have a video on electrical connectors and how to strip wire and how to crimp connectors. You can watch that video on how to do all this other stuff, but I'll just give you a quick little refresher here. So I have some terminals here on the bench, okay, and what you'll see here in this pile, these are all crimp style connectors, okay. These over here are posi locks. Now crimp style connector, just to kind of give you a little refresher. You have um, non-insulated, which would be like that, is a non-insulated ring terminal, non-insulated butt connector. Um, the uh, insulated versions of those would be something like this. You have the insulation on it. Here's an insulated butt connector, um, another insulated butt connector. So there's just some different connectors. Now on this, the one thing that's important to know is you have... Um, a PVC um, coated connector when you have it insulated and you have a translucent which would be these these would be the translucent meaning you can kind of see through it okay the translucent or nylon they're a little bit better quality of a connector and what you do is you you know you stick your wire in there and you crimp down on it and then you heat this these are ones that are like a heat shrink so when you put your wire in there and you heat, heat that with a heat gun, it shrinks down around and it holds the wire and keeps it a little bit uh, more secure. Some of these, like this butt connector, has actually a little solder joint in the middle. It's really hard to see, but you would put your wire in there, crimp it, and then heat it, and that little solder joint just sort of melts a little bit. That's the only place I would use a solder, okay? And that's way different than what we're talking about with a solder gun. So those are some of the comparison of the terminals. Um, this is a terminal I see a lot of guys use. It's called a, a scotch lock, a push to connect. It's all different things. But what you do is, is you basically you lay your wire in this connector, in this little metal thing right there. You lay your wire in there, and you fold this over, and you smash that with pliers, and it, it makes a connector. Probably the worst style connector out of all these because these definitely get corrosion in them they break they don't make good connections a lot of times when you put your wire in there and then you crimp um, you know you smash this down on there it won't even have a good connection at that point so this is definitely something you want to stay away from um, as far as you can okay so let's talk a little bit about posi locks what's a posi lock posi lock is just a connector that unscrews. So as a comparison, this is a um, nylon butt connector. This is the same thing equivalent in a posi lock as a butt connector. Okay, so all you do is they just have ends that unscrew. Okay, very, very easy to use. So simple as that. If you look down in there, you can see a little, like a little point, a little pricker. That's kind of what pricks into the wire and holds the wire. So I'll just give you a real quick uh, thing on this. So we're just going to strip, strip a piece of wire here. Okay, two of them here. I just twist them just a little bit. Okay, now this is not the right size. To do this but I used a bigger one to show you all you do is you put this on the wire that nut you put this like this and you screw it on okay now like I say this is you can see it's not the right size but it's just easier to see in the camera that holds on okay you're not gonna pull that off you're gonna break the wire before you do that you take the other one and you do the same thing. You make sure you, that enough of the wire is sticking through. The one thing you got to be careful on some of these, when you're screwing this on, it'll actually back the wire back out of here. So you kind of got to hold it, you know, put a little pressure this way, 
when you're screwing that in there and help hold it in there okay and now you see that's a good connection that's not going to come apart now here's the really cool thing when you want to take something apart or you say damn I, I forgot to do something you just unscrew it unscrew that pull your wire out and now you have your two parts again it's that easy with the crimp terminal you can't do that okay so that is the butt connector style okay and they come um, in all the different sizes obviously that's the bigger size that's like a 12 gauge wire size this is a smaller one this is more this is more the size we would use on this this is more like a 16 or 18 okay so you do the same thing you just slide that on there and you can see it still has a little pricker in the center of that screw that on and that's on there I mean I'm pulling hard that's on there do the same thing here make sure you have wire sticking out screw that on the one other thing you'll see everybody's going to tell you if you solder the wires you obviously need to put a heat shrink tubing on there okay this you don't need to do anything it's sealed okay it's sealed it's waterproof I mean you're not gonna pull that apart let me let me try there we go so if you look actually if you can see that the wires actually broke I tore the wire that's how strong those things are okay so you don't need any heat shrink you don't need any of that they're actually smaller than if you did the butt connector and then put a heat shrink over it they're actually a little smaller so if you're doing internal wire on handlebars um, there's the wire all fell out of there all the broken wire if you're doing internal wiring on handlebars these are actually smaller okay and you can go down to even smaller yet as far as a, a connector actually here's the really small one so you can see how small that is compared to that okay one other thing is let's say you have um, a wire this is on your bike your car whatever this is running to something and it's got a connector and it has a connector and you don't want to cut into this wire okay with wire or terminals uh, crimp connectors you would have to cut into this you would put a connector something like a spade terminal on one end and then connect them together and do all that okay a lot of times you don't want to cut into your factory bike wiring you know you don't want to avoid the warranty all that type of stuff so what they make is this cool little thing it's called a posi tap just like it sounds you're gonna tap into the wire so what you would do is you you have your wire okay you do the same thing and it again has that little pricker in there so you're going to screw this in okay so now we're connected onto there good so we want to take this wire and we want to attach it into here without cutting into it okay old way you see guys they take a razor blade and they strip some of this insulation off and you do all that and hopefully you don't cut the wire then you have to figure out how do you put heat shrink over there you electrical tape the hell out of it okay here's what a posi lock does and like I said this is a posi tap hopefully you can see this because it's kind of small on here the pricker part sticks out it actually pierces into the wire and the cap actually has a slot in it okay and you get these for the right size wire this is a little big again to show you but all you do is you put your wire let me put this down you put your wire in there okay and again this isn't the right size wire so okay so you just slide that slide that cap right on your wire okay then all you do is you screw it together and what's going to happen is that pricker right there that needle point is going to pierce into the wire and again you just screw it together and 
right now you have a wire that's tapped into another wire and you didn't cut anything. So let's say this is running you know, to your stereo. You now put that connector on there. This is say your factory wiring harness right here you know, that's going out to the rest of the bike or whatever and you want to tap into the positive, the hot battery side. There you go. That's how you do it. You put your connector on, you just tap right into the wire, and you're all set. You sell the bike, you, you want to take something apart, you simply unscrew that. I should have probably used the right wire, but you take that off. And if you look, you barely can see a little prick hole right there. Okay, that's where that thing pierced into there. That's all there is. So you can put a little a dab of silicone or something on that to keep it, you know, sealed up. But that's all you do as far as tapping into another wire. The other cool thing, let me strip a little bit, is let's say you have a wire and, and you ran something and you don't have it anymore, you don't need it anymore, whatever. They have the end taps, okay? These are both end taps. And what they are is it's the same posi lock thing, but the end is solid. So let's say you you want to run a wire, extra wire, because someday you want to add fog lights. You can run that wire and, and hook it all up, and you know when you have everything apart, it's much easier to do. You do all that, and then you just simply put that in there. Screw that on the end and now you're good. It's sealed up, nothing can touch it, you know, nothing shorts out, it's in there. So when you're ready to use it someday, you just come up, nothing to, else to do, unscrew that. Put your, eh, of course I dropped that. Put your connector on, and run your wire that you're ready to go do. Put your other connector and run your wire. So they're very versatile and you can see, take it apart, you're good to go. You cannot do that with solder, obviously, or can you do that with the crimp style terminals. So hopefully that shows you a little bit. I know uh, I'll probably get a lot of emails on this one about, well I always soldered and I've done it for 20 years and it always worked perfect. Good for you. I'm sure it did and I'm sure when you started out, you probably had all the messes that I talked about. Okay, so if you don't know solder, do you need rosin core? Do you need flux core? Do you need a solder gun, a solder iron? Should you use a little torch to solder the stuff or should you heat it up first? Do you heat the wire? How do you hold the wires together? If you can't answer all those things, don't do it because you're going to have a mess. And I always see these guys when they want to do the internal wire handlebars, they want to solder all that stuff and put it up in there so that when something goes wrong or you want to change something, you can't get to it. You don't know if the wires are good or bad. Your switch all of a sudden starts to not work. You start changing switches. You start looking for everything in here. It's a bad solder joint. Okay? With this stuff, you can do it. So I would definitely not solder. I would, if you don't want to use the posi taps, do the crimp connectors but I would definitely look into posi taps. We have them on the website in little kits. We have all kind of little electrical kits to help you with those jobs. Um, take a look at that stuff and uh, you know, send me some messages. Let me know what you think. Uh, but hopefully that explains a little bit about to solder or to not solder. Thanks for watching.